Hello, I'm Wally Wood, and we welcome you to the Revelation File. If you've been with us any time at all, you know that this is a ministry that shares with you news and information, education, as well as teaching of the times. We are an end time Bible prophecy ministry, and everything we teach, even when we're not reporting news, when we're just giving spiritual teaching, it's oriented toward end time worldview end time preparations, things of this nature. We primarily address <clears throat> maturing Christian, Christian. And uh, because we know that this is the group that has fallen upon them from the Lord, specific assignments for a specific time having to do with the end time. So from time to time, we'll go from news reporting to teaching. And that's what we're going to do today. and. I think that the bottom line to everything that we're teaching has to do with the basics of our walk as Christians. But as maturing Christians, again, as Ephesians chapter 4 says, that we are to grow up, we are to mature into the fullness of Christ himself. Because as he is, so are we. And you're going to hear me repeating these verses over and over and over again. <clears throat> as People who walk by faith, walk as Christians. We tend to vacillate from time to time because uh, the world being as deceptive as it is and all the distractions, uh, our attentions are drawn from one area to another. I thought we'd go back to some basics today. What does God always expect from us? He doesn't expect perfection. If you remember in the uh, Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, Be ye perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Now, <clears throat> that right there is an impossible task. But did he mean perfection, as we understand perfection without error? Many have addressed that particular passage. And it's my conviction that knowing that we would never be perfect in all our actions and thoughts and words and things of this nature, <clears throat> he knew that what was the highest goal was perfection of heart. Be ye perfect toward the Lord as he is toward you. Do not waver. Stand strong and solid in your commitment to him. And I want to address that today because we tend to forget what those basics are. Now, a few programs ago, I talked to you about my book, The Mystery, Heaven's Secret Story. And you can get a copy of it by ordering it over our website, wallywoodministries.com. You can go to Amazon. But... It takes you back to the beginning, and then beyond that, from the starting point back, just like the uh, book of Ephesians does. Genesis takes you from the beginning and points you forward. Ephesians takes you from the beginning and points you back, before creation. And in this outline, we established the fact that there was something that took place in the family of God. We wouldn't even say heaven because heaven itself is a dominion. It had a creation point. But way before anything was ever created, it was just the three of them. God Almighty, God the Word, God the Spirit. And as the Lord began to open this to me by using scriptures, things of this nature, I discovered that there was a point and that a need or a change came about as the Father or as the, the Almighty oriented himself toward the idea, the concept of creation. And what took place then? has been retained and has remained since then. 
we're told in Scripture, and we're very familiar with this passage in uh, Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Likewise, the Father and the Spirit. In Malachi 3, 6, I am the Lord, I change not. In James 1, 7, uh, 17, every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. He does not change. So whatever was established then, as far back as creation and before, has remained ever since. And these were all things that were incorporated into the act of creation and the time of life in the universe. It has never changed. So when I speak in terms of the basics, that's what I'm referring to, the basics. And as I noted in the book, love started all this, and love's going to end it. We're told in Scripture that God is love. That is who He is. He doesn't just love as a verb. He is the noun of love. He is the source from which all love flows. Anything that can be loved finds its origin in the fact that he is the noun of love. All right? Now, because of that, and I'll even uh, bring forth a little element in the book as well, itself. The very nature of love is it needs to be needed and it needs to meet a need. That is the essence of love. It needs to be needed and it needs to meet a need. Having the need to be needed and it was just the family of Elohim, the three, you can see the problem or the challenge. There was no need. And yet, it was within himself. There was nothing that depended upon him, and there was nothing to which he could minister to come to the aid. That, in human terms, that was a problem. And the only way to solve that problem was to create. And I won't go through the whole plan at this particular point. I do want you to get the book because it's, very, it's got over 300 scriptures. And it's very intense in going back to an era where there is no record. The Old Testament did not record any of this at all. It wasn't until after Jesus raised from the dead and ascended into heaven that God began to unveil this before the Apostle Paul. The mystery. And that's not today's topic, but I want to use that as a starting point. Because love started this. The need to exercise love. The need to demonstrate and portray love. Because it fulfills the existence and the definition of love. If love is denied that opportunity to express itself, to present itself, it's incomplete. So we were created because of the need of the Almighty to love and be loved. It's in that context that we go back to the basics of our belief system in Him. Our service before Him does not begin with faith. It begins with love. Faith is one of the fruits, one of the byproducts of love. And the closest we come to understanding this is in human relations. Even better, romance. Because when you find someone 
that you have been captured to love, all the rules of love come into play. When you fall in love with someone, it goes beyond just romance. Because what it creates is an environment of trust. And even the, the words we would use fall a little short of the full impact of what that means. It goes beyond just mere camaraderie. It goes beyond just mere fellowship. There is a uniting that takes place when there's the connection made in the cords of love. Trust, faith, belief, support, these are all the elements once the connection has been made. And this is the basics, the foundation of why God created us, why he wanted us. It goes beyond just mere family. That's the environment that is created off the need to love and be loved. I hope you're picking up on this. Scriptures tell us that, in, like in, um, over here in, in well, let me, okay. We've, we've reviewed this passage before, but again, it serves as a cornerstone of what the Lord is wanting us to be alert to in these troubling days. Luke 21, 36, Jesus speaking, Watch ye therefore and pray always, that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. He placed a condition here by which we will remain strong through the trying, challenging days of the last days. In Hebrews 11:6, without faith it's impossible to please God because anyone who approaches him must first believe that he exists and that he rewards those who easily, uh, I mean, who earnestly seek him. Love for him. To such a degree that he is more real to you than the people that you love. I, um, I had to deal with this a, a number of years ago as I was studying this issue of the love of God before there can ever be a love for God. I wanted to better understand the nature of his love. When you study grace, you are learning about his personality, his character, his mercy. But you go back deeper than that, at the bedrock of the who that he is, and you end up with the fact that he is the fullness of all that love can ever be defined to be. So, of course, that takes us into the scriptures like in Genesis, the Ten Commandments. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, body, and soul. Jesus, is, Jesus repeated it in the, in the Gospels. And somehow, well, when I got to that particular point, I stopped. I said, now, wait a minute, hold on. Love the Lord thy God with all that is in you, all your heart, mind, body, and soul. And I had to confess before the Lord. I said, Lord, this is impossible. I can't get into commandment number two, love thy neighbor as thyself, <laughs> because I stumbled at number one. If I'm going to love my neighbor as myself, I've got to first love you so that it is possible for me to love my neighbor. I've got to fulfill commandment number one to even move into commandment number two. That's impossible. 
there's no way, humanly speaking, that we can love the Lord our God without end, with all my, our heart, mind, body, and soul, continuously. We've got too many distractions in this world. And I asked him about it. And he responded. He said, in your own house, where do you go when you're hungry? He said, well, I'll go to the kitchen. He said, you go to the source, don't you? Yeah. Well, what does my word say about me? God is love. Son, if you're lacking love for me, you need to come to me to get it. Now, I don't know about you, but I chuckled. <laughs> I said, well, that's a setup, <laughs> a divine setup. I've got to go to the source of love to get the love that he requires and wishes from me. Because that's the only way to make it possible. So what that has done in my life, it has enabled me and my wife to awaken every day with this prayer. Lord, we thank you that today we're going to love you more than we did yesterday. You are the source for our love back to you. And he even said in his word that if you keep my commandments, you will dwell in my love. If you dwell in my love, you'll keep my commandments. It's an unbreakable circle. This is the basics. Before we can learn anything more about faith or trust or obedience or dependence or anything of this nature, we have to begin at the basic part. How much do you love God? Having never seen him, having never experienced him with your eye and in the, in the physical world, as Jesus told the disciples, uh, I think it was Philip, he said, <laughs> you're blessed because you see. How much more so will those who do not see be blessed to believe? So, he expects us, he wants us to love the impossible, to love the invisible, to love the one that we have not yet experienced fully, completely, totally. How impossible is that? How challenging is that? That's the way to solve it right there. Even before believing fully, dare to go to him and ask him out of sure hope and faith. How many times have I heard non-believers cry out to a God they didn't believe in, didn't know, but in desperation and hope, they're calling out to him, Oh God, if you are there, please help me. And being rich in mercy, the majority of cases that I've seen, he's quick to, to reply and to respond because he wants to give everybody at least a solid foot, uh, foot forward in establishing an encounter with him. That's what's important to him. Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first, and implied and foremost, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these other things for which you are concerned will be added unto you. The kingdom of God seek first and his righteousness. That second part, and his righteousness, is what we're talking about. Everything that he is, everything that he does, is rooted in his love. And he's inviting us to be the same. Uh, again, another note in my book. We often speak in terms of there's a hole in every human heart that only God can fill. Well, guess what? We brought that hole with us because we're made in his image and after his likeness. We brought with us the hole that's in his heart. 
that only we can fill. So we have a, a context of precept. We're not to live our lives in hope. We're to live our lives by faith. And that faith is born out of a love that has come from him to us for him. At the very beginning, that humbles us. And we begin our relationship and our walk with him with humility. And the more we grow in our knowledge of him, our experience of him in our lives, it's intended and designed to keep us humble. As Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. That keeps us in a state of humility. Love him first. Love him foremost. Above all others, including your family. Including everybody in your family. From parents to spouse to children. You love him first. Because without his say-so, you wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here. And it puts into full context the nature of our walk with him. Without him, I can do nothing. Without him, I own nothing. Without him, <clears throat> I accomplish nothing. I am nothing without him. It begins at that point of love, because that is who he is. Second Chronicles 16.9 For the eyes of the Lord roam throughout the earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is fully devoted to him. Now, we get into trouble <clears throat> when we lose sight of that fact. And when we drift off that track of staying connected to him directly and all the time, always, the second part of that verse addresses that. You have acted foolishly in this matter. From now on, therefore, you will be at war. Our wrestling is not against flesh and blood, but against everything that comes at us in the spiritual realm. When we get our sights off of him, when we forget him, when we neglect him, even when we abuse him for all that he has done, is doing, and is going to do, we have war. And our souls, and our flesh, because of that. That's what he's inviting us to, to do. It can't be done just because you decide to. It can only be done by you maintaining this heart of connection, this desire. Being the creator, he has programmed every human being ever born to want to love him. That's what's intended and meant by the scripture that says, Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord. When you stop and think about it, <laughs> it makes perfect sense. And I asked him about that myself one time. I said, this makes you look like a cosmic bully. Where's the love in this? He said, it'll be answered on two levels. Number one, when I show up, in the sky. When love himself shows up, every cell, every neuron, every proton, every molecule in your body is not going to be able to remain silent because you'll be facing its creator. Even the rocks will cry out. Everything in you will connect with its creator. That's number one. Number two, you just fell in love with love himself. And those who don't know me, their hell begins at that moment. Because the 
realization will hit them that they will spend the rest of eternity without the one they just fell in love with, love himself. These are sober things for us to understand, to realize, to retain, to walk in, to maintain our focus on. <clears throat> First and foremost, exclusively, our love for him. May I grow in love for you each and every day. Whether you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God, the scripture says. Your love for him fits within that context. The days ahead are not going to get lighter. They're not going to get better, according to Paul, 2 Timothy, chapter 3. But it's not a sign to us to fall into fear and anxiety and dismay and confusion as it is to the rest of the world who doesn't know him. We are anchored in the reality of him. Now we grow in loving him more and more and more each and every day. We invite the Holy Spirit to walk us into the deeper things of his love, the reality of knowing his love, not his love for us, but our love for him first. And everything else falls into place. Getting back to basics. That's what this particular teaching is about, so that we may stand stronger in the things that would come and distract us. I'm Wally Wood. I thank you for watching. We're going to continue talking about these basics in the next few programs. So we invite you to return, and I thank you. Thank you for watching. You have been watching the Revelation File Report with Wally Wood, a Wally Wood Ministries production from Houston, Texas. You are able to support the ministry by donating at wallywoodministries.com and by mail at Wally Wood Ministries, P.O. Box 42005, Houston, Texas 77242. Wally is available to present full two-hour forums in your city called the Revelation File News Forum. For more details, contact Annie Valdez at 713-560-3348 or by email at andy at andyvaladez.com. The Revelation File News Report is a weekly update of global trends in the news as it aligns with end-time Bible prophecy. Tune in again next time and be sure to like and share this channel.